Okay, in this video, we're going to basically take this kit, couple wheel kit that I previously put together, and going to basically turn it into a cubmobile. Now, obviously, this one's a little bit elaborate. There's a lot more extra. We're not going to have the top or fins or a tail on it back here. But uh, this is the Cubmobile from 2013 that actually won the whole race. And uh, it was designed to make it look like a hammerhead shark. And I'm just going to be working on the basic frame today. And if you want to take it to the next level, you always can. That's probably the reason why I did this video, so that you could quickly put together the frame. Uh, I can show you the steps I've learned to do it quicker based on the fact that I have messed up in the past as far as assembling things and learn from it. And I just want to pass that on so that you can quickly assemble this and move on to uh, uh, customization. I'm also going to show you some stuff so to make sure that you get a good um, secure belt or seat belt rather. And believe it or not, I have, have had cases where the seat belt worked and kept the kept the scout from flying out of the, flying off the Cubmobile when he uh, hit head on into the side uh, of the racetrack. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that I, I like to do is lay out the basic, all the pieces. You have your main frame, that's the longest piece. Your two axles, those are going to be about 28 inches a piece. Then you have your angle brackets, and those are designed to help stabilize the back. And um, I've actually pre drilled some pocket holes into the angle brackets so that you can assemble it fairly quickly. And these are the back supports for, they're going to go here to support the backrest. Of course, here's the backrest. Okay, you'll find in your package two pieces that look exactly the same. Uh, one you can use as your backrest, and then the other is actually going to be your foot support that we've added in as an additional safety feature because what was happening is the scouts weren't putting their foot on the actual footrest here. And so the result was the children would, kids would put down, put their kids down, the kids would put their feet down here, and then the Cubmobile would run over their calves or their, their ankles. So we designed an extra safety piece uh, so that the kids couldn't put their feet on the ground. They would hit this uh, foot support right here. The other two pieces are your steering blocks, and these are actually pretty important. I'll show you how to attach those. And you do not want to give a whole lot of wiggle room here. Uh, I'll show you the trick I use to keep that to a minimum. And the reason you don't want too much play here is the straighter the Cubmobile is, the faster it's going to get to the end of the track because you're not going to be wasting energy zigzagging along the track and there does not have to be that much turning when you go down this track because it's long enough and wide enough most cubmobile tracks so that you don't need to worry about a whole lot about steering just some minor tweaks the last reason you don't want to have a whole lot of play is that if you have it too loose as soon as the scout leaves the track they happen to take a wild swing and sometimes run into the crowd. While that does make for good humor, um, it doesn't allow them to get to the end of the track. And the last piece is the seat that goes here. So, well, the second last piece. The other piece is the brake. Okay, so the, the first thing I like to do is take both the axles and drill the holes for the wheels. And I do that by taking a straight edge from across 
and then drawing across to get the exact center to drill the hole. Take the straight edge from corner to corner. And obviously these are a little rounded, so you're not going to get the, an exact corner to corner because these 2x4s are rough lumber. And that doesn't look quite exactly right. So sometimes you have to play around with it. If you realize. Okay, now it's time to drill the holes for the typical bolts that go in for the, the wheels. And I just tend to um, take a drill bit that I may have that will bore out most of the material, but not all the material, because obviously you want the threads to grab in here. But you want to remove enough material, because if you don't, if you try to bore this down in here, you'll, this will either split uh, as you're doing it, or it will uh, break during the race. Okay, so I use a simple little level just to make sure that the piece is level before I drill my pilot hole for the uh, axle for the wheel. I also like to use a little hole punch before to make sure my drill does not slip. Okay, now that you have drilled the two axles, the holes for the wheels for the two axles, it's time to drill a hole in your main frame so that you can make sure that the front axle can turn. So I usually just take one of the steering blocks and then put it at the end to measure the width of the axle. Um, take a quick measurement. Then the next thing to do is to take one of your axles, do the same thing, drill that, that hole out for the axle. And remember, this is for the front axle. You actually want this to be somewhat loose, this hole here, because uh, you don't want to bind too much, because this is what you're going to be using to steer with. So the easiest way to figure out that center line Let's just measure it, 28 inches, so 14 inches. There in the center. Just to make 
make it easier here. Again, I need to find the center point. 14. And a quick tip on how to line up this piece so it's dead even in the center of your axle is to um, to mark your center point I have a center point here and then a center point here so this is right at three and a half so we went one and three fourths up from the side Now, let's make sure you can see that. Now, it's got thinner. A speed square will allow you to make sure that your rear axle is sitting perpendicular to your main axle. These are very inexpensive and you can pick them up in any Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay, so ch slight change of plans. Normally I call for two of these to go on the back of, for the rear axle because you don't want the rear axle to, to twist. But unfortunately I only have one and I don't have the time to run out to Home Depot. But one will work because all we need to do is add a screw or two to support it while you continue to work on it because those two angle brackets that we're attaching are going to really keep the rear axle from twisting and turning. So with that change I'm going to ignore these lines. I'm going to measure an inch three fourths and an inch and three fourths. So I have the exact center 